project manager. Um, project manager from the Parks Department overseeing the project. So as you just saw in that uh, pop-up, tonight's uh, meeting is being recorded. Um, so uh, it's gonna be recorded and, and posted on the project page. So uh, we're gonna post, and Christine's already posted the link for the project page in the, in the chat. So please share with any of your friends, neighbors, or interested uh, um, Friend, uh, participants that maybe didn't uh, join tonight, um, and uh, my email will be provided so they can provide input. Um, so during the portion presentation portion, we ask that you keep your uh, video and microphone off. Uh, during the discussion period, we'll be turn. We ask that you turn your videos on, and then we will be calling on you uh, with the raised hand feature. So next. Oh, yeah, I already hit that. So next. So we want to ensure the conversation is a pleasant one uh, experience for all and that all community members are comfortable sharing their thoughts, questions and feedback. So please be sure uh, respectful and mindful of each other's time as we only have an hour and a half together tonight. Let's keep the questions and comments project specific and on point. And please wait until all attendees have had the opportunity to ask a question or provide a comment before asking a second one. Uh, additionally, my contact information is at the bottom of that this page and on the project page. So if you uh, did not uh, have a chance to speak for whatever reason, whether it's an audio issue, you can certainly uh, send your comments to, to my email. Next. So just going over a few Zoom, oh, back one. A few Zoom tips. I know we're all basically pros at this point, um, but uh, to turn your camera on, you click on the camera, um, and then uh, to uh, to raise your hand, you click on the hand feature. And when we call on you, we'll we'll provide the ability to unmute. So uh, once you're called on, uh, you can unmute yourself, and then you can ask your question. Next. So, um, so tonight's agenda uh, is first, in, uh, just to keep you, give you an update on uh, urban forest plan for citywide. Then we're gonna get into the project team and introductions, do a, an overview of what we've presented and discussed up to this point, have a presentation on the preferred plan, and then have a listening and discussions and a closing remarks. Next. So just to make sure everybody is aware, uh, we have an urban forestry plan that is being conducted citywide. This is looking at the tree canopy health and amount of trees throughout every neighborhood. So um, this slide is just giving a super brief overview of what that, uh, what that entails. Next. And then that meeting is being held on March 14th at 5.30. Uh, so there is a virtual link for that. Um, and uh, at the bottom of that page on the left, you see there's a project page as well as contact for Maggie Owens, who is a uh, planner in the Parks Department, who is facilitating that meeting. Um, Christine, are we able to post uh, that link as well to the chat feature? I'm okay. the meeting link now, and then I will post the project page as well. Wonderful. Thank you all. Or thank you, Christine. Um, so if anybody's interested in that, I highly encourage you to attend, uh, attend that meeting. So next. So as I said, my name is Nathan Frazee. I'm the project manager from the Parks Department. Uh, Christine, also from the Parks Department, is our outreach coordinator in external affairs. Uh, I know there was some talks about doing some ornamental planting beds and everything. She is a great contact if we're interested in joining uh, are creating a friends group that would uh, be interested in maintaining some of those planting beds. Our designer tonight is Monique Hall from BSC Group. She also has uh, Sing Ning and um, Tanya. Tanya, Tanya from her office here tonight. And then I also have um, ONS uh, contact, just Sean's contact here. So any issues that may be in the neighborhood that aren't specifically dealing with a project or 
the park, uh, his contact would be uh, a great resource for, for getting those addressed. Next. Um, did, uh, is this out of order? I, I thought the schedule was the first thing. I thought we took that out. That out. No, oh, I meant the. I meant the. I'm sorry. The construction schedule. Anyways, that's all right. We'll we'll add it back in so it's in uh, on the the final presentation that gets posted. So uh, for the project schedule, we're here tonight in in March on our final meeting. Um, we have a funding commitment of 2.375 million, of which 400,000 of that is from a park grant that comes from the state. So we're looking to hopefully have get consensus on a, a preferred plan tonight. And then Monique and her team will use that plan to develop it further into construction documents, going out to bid uh, this the, late this spring with the anticipation of construction starting uh, this summer and with a targeted full park opening of uh, late spring of 2023. So uh, jumping to this slide, so I just, uh, just as a reminder from our previous meetings that we have four different criteria that go into our parks design. Uh, that's the city of Boston priorities, safety guidelines and regulatory guidelines, the parks department goals, and then the community input that we're getting tonight. Next. So uh, the city's priorities are expanding walkable access to parks, addressing equity, climate resiliency, health, and then housing and community building. Next. The parks department uh, is accessible and available to all, diverse, balanced, and efficient mix of use, meaningful and inclusive community engagement, adaptive and resilient landscapes, and then promoting connections. Hopefully you'll see a lot of these initiatives uh, overlaid in the design tonight. For the elements of play, because we do have a playground component of the park, we have social, communication, sensory, cognitive, and physical. Next. So this, this is a really kind of dense diagram on, on what each of those elements are uh, within that. Um, it's in the notes, so people can certainly go back to it. But um, several of the are, are somewhat explanatory, uh, self-explanatory, so I'm not going to go into that tonight. Next. So just our, our general park uh, and some background, it, the park was established in 1911. Um, it, the playground was last renovated in 08. We did do some court renovations of 2020 to uh, tie those coats over and make sure they were safe for all users to get us to this project. Um, and then we're looking for this renovation going forward. With that being said, if there are current issues that are in the park right now, any safety concerns, do not hesitate to uh, uh, log those into 311 so we can get those addressed in the meantime. And then again, as I mentioned, for flower beds or anything uh, more um, augmented uh, plantings, uh, forming a friends group is an excellent resource to, to help those maintain. Next. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Monique to go over uh, the presentation. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Monique Hall with BSC Group. I'm a landscape architect. This is our third public meeting, and I'm just going to recap uh, what we did the previous two meetings. So we did a site study and a circulation study, and the circulation study was really revealing in that there is no accessible access on Dacia Street. You really have to go to Danube Street to access the park if you're in a wheelchair. So that's one of the um, issues that we'll be addressing. We presented three schemes at our last meeting. Scheme A basically kept all of the program, the park uh, and playground elements where they are. Scheme B kind of pushed the uh, courts off to the south end of the park, creating a large central lawn. And then Scheme C actually enlarged uh, the playground area. The courts are still to the south of the park and we have a smaller lawn. 
So some of the things that we heard at the first two meetings, this is a little wordle exercise. There were lots of comments about fitness equipment, that the, the fitness equipment in Mary Hannon was well utilized. There were lots of votes for the splash pad for having mo more than one type of spray equipment for having multiple access points and for widening that area. There were several um, comments in favor of a multi-sports court over a tennis court. Um, there was definitely a lot of talk about safety and lighting at night. So that's something that we will address throughout the park design, but it's not something that you actually see in plan format um, on screen tonight. There's a lot of talk about vibrant colors and using Harambi Park as, as an example, having colors that reflect the character of the neighborhood that made it more inviting to kids um, and family friendly. There was uh, talk about making the park accessible to not just kids, but to families for adults and then for, for um, older people as well. There was discussions about seating areas for activities for a wide variety of activities, uh, seating areas for grilling, seating areas for knitting and crocheting. Um, there was, uh, as I mentioned, discussion about having accessible route. Um, safety was a big concern, having a wide variety of slide types, um, having uh, using the existing slopes for uh, possible activities. Um, having uh, a book stand, a, a community library of sorts. Um, and then there were lots of other kind of side comments as well. So these are the comments. This is what we heard. And that all culminated into, drum roll please. Well, well actually, before you click the next slide, there were two things that this, this jogged my memory that I wanted to update people on is one is the, the police call box. That was, a, there was a strong, advocating for that uh, level of security. We've been reaching out and started that process, and it sounds very promising that we'll be able to get that incorporated into this project. And then the other was the mural wall. Um, that was done by City Year and the school. I reached out to the mayor's mural team to see what could be done uh, for the maintenance of that. And they do not recommend doing it on retaining walls, which that is. So they suggested that we reach out to city year in the school and see if they can do some touch up and maintenance on that. However, they did offer to redo the mural that is in the schoolyard. Um, so I've reached out to the school uh, to see if we can start that process, which has a, a sense of community engagement through that as well. So those are big arching items that you're not gonna see in the design plan, but are being incorporated in some fashion. Sorry, now the drum roll. <laughs> Hang on, I'm just I'm typing notes at the same time. So uh, this is our preferred plan at this point in time. This is a combination of schemes B and C where we're pushing both of the sports courts to the south end of the park. What that means is that we can still get an enlarged play zone. Um, can everyone see my cursor? No. Yes. yes. Okay, so the sports courts are here at the south end of the park. Um, the play zone does stretch around the um, west edge of the park. We still have a very large lawn. The previous lawn was about 11,500 square feet. This has been slightly reduced to 10,000 square feet. Um, the way we were able to do this was we took the fitness area and pushed it to where the current um, tot lot, the two to five play group is. And then we're able to terrace the plaza. So this becomes a splash pad and kind of a natural play and learning environment. Um, so a little bit more, the accessible route, we were able to straighten out. So it's a straight shot from Dacia Street. You come all the way up and then you would turn. And then this um, pedestrian circulation aligns with the existing steps, but we can actually flatten out those stairs and make it a ramp. So it's accessible all the way from Dacia Street to get to the large central lawn. And then if you were just to continue um, to the east that would put you through Danube Street. So it's an accessible route from Dacia Street to Danube Street without any stairs and without any ramp rails, which we're very, very excited about. Um, we still have the large central lawn. I talked about we relocate the play areas um, at the splash pad. Uh, so just to take advantage of the existing slope 
and the existing grades were able to incorporate two embankment slides. So there's a approximately a seven foot slide here and then approximately a five foot height slide here. And the way that works is that it kind of um, works to again lengthen and, and, and widen the play zone. So we have a small play um, area here. Uh, kids can go down the slide come down and they can come all the way around or they could come up this is, would be a series of like large stepping boulders that they could actually climb up and then find themselves back into the play area uh, and so we talked about the accessible ramp we talked about the fitness area and so kind of what that looks like some of these areas um, i'm going to go through play equipment first so these are the play equipment pieces that we've got the footprints from the manufacturer and, and we can fit them into the spaces that are shown in plan format. We talked about the supernova, which is great for balance and spinning and it's fun for all ages. I've seen little two year olds on this piece of equipment as well as 14, 15 year olds. We have a universal carousel, which is fun. It's wheelchair accommodating. You see um, the lady here in this picture, she's got one foot on the actual carousel and one foot on the ground. So it's easy to push. You're not like actually exhausting a lot of energy. You can kind of hop on and push off with your foot. Uh, so that's a great piece of equipment. For the younger age groups, we have a seesaw and a daisy springer. And then for swings, there was a lot of comments in favor for swings and we were able to um, get a wide variety of springs uh, swings into the plan. So that includes the expression swing um, where uh, a parent or another sibling can face a toddler in a bucket seat. We can do one with um, in, I'm sorry, in a baby seat, we can do one with an accessible bucket seat. We can also do the nest swing and the plan is also showing a footprint for two single user swings. So the swings, it looks like we've got all user uh, basis covered. Uh, the, this is what the embankment slide would look like. Um, this is about a five to six foot height slide. So we've got two slides like this that take advantage of the natural slope. And then the way the users would come back up is they would go up a series of steps. These are poured concrete forms, but I think that we're leaning more towards natural boulders, just kind of replicating uh, the natural environment. And there'll be more of that to come in, in a few minutes. So two of the wide embankment sl slides lead from the play area down to the splash pad area. And then for play equipment structures, we talked about having a traditional post and platform structure versus a hybrid structure. And this is a hybrid structure. So there's opportunities for post and platform elements that you would step up to a series of platforms and that would carry the child up and then the child could go down the slide. So this is uh, for an age group that's two to five. Um, so this has two slides, actually three slides. It has a little crawl through tunnel. There's several climbing elements. And then this slide just kind of shows you all of the different features that are on this play structure. So again, there's a slide here. There's a slide here in the back, a double slide that you can't really see. Another slide here, but you get to see there's also nets um, where the child can play. There's these little flap doors this is a little kind of a, a ramp so plenty of different activities for the two to five age group within one piece of equipment for the five to twelve play equipment piece um, we heard a lot of support for large slides so this particular piece of equipment has just a regular height slide and then it's got the super tall slide as well Again, post and platform, so opportunities to go up like a series of regular stairs, but also there's climbing nets. Um, so a round climbing net here, um, a more kind of uh, non-traditional way to get into the play structure here. And then this has all of the different elements. So there's a little hammock down in here. So tic-tac-toe panel. You can see here's the stairs for the post and platform. So if you didn't want to climb up a net, you could actually take the stairs. We have the small slide in the back, the big taller slide in the front. Um, one of the climbing apparatuses here and then the banister bars. Um, they're kind of fun. You kind of you go up into the platform and then you straddle the bars like you're sliding down a double 
double staircase banister. So it's an it's an interesting uh, play feature. So um, we have a little key plan in the bottom right hand corner. Um, we did talk previously about having a like a trike track around the park. Um, I will say I can't see it here, but we do have two perimeter paths around the track. I mean, around in this concept. So one takes you um, up and around by the splash pad and then around the courts. And so that's that's a full loop around the park, is essentially. Um, it's a full loop around the park. Uh, it's about one sixth of a mile. So six laps around the park will get you to a mile. And then the question that we'll be asking tonight is, for this inner loop, which is about 500 uh, linear feet, do we want to try and do something colored and make it a trike track? Um, it will interrupt the perimeter path, but that's something that we can discuss as well. And then for the splash pad, uh, we'll be incorporating several types of jets, so it won't be a single spray feature, but we think there's also an opportunity to do something interesting in the ground where water uh, comes over a series of textures and maybe we can in introduce some some uh, water stop gates so that the kids can actually manipulate the flow of water. Uh, we think that this is a great opportunity to make this a real learning environment where kids can be more connected with nature. So. Uh, those connective elements back to nature will be water, it would be the textures that's whatever inlaid into the ground, it would be in the stone boulders that are adjacent the stairs, and then it could also be, I keep going backwards, it could also be um, represented in some of the play elements. So adjacent the splash plaza here, we could do a little learning and sensory plaza. So the sensory elements, one of the items that was asked for was like a chalkboard panel, um, in this particular one, it also has like a clock and it's got a few little um, uh, toggles to, to count with. We could do something larger. We could do an actual large abacus. And this is a stone abacus again, uh, just kind of playing up the nature, the themes of nature. There's an opportunity to do a percussive panel. So we could do drums and bongos in this area as well. So this is what I am calling the learning and sensory area. Um, and this is really just kind of a natural and interactive play area for the kids. The multi court sports courts are to the south of the plan. And we talked several times about having color in the courts. So there's an opportunity to do something interesting there. And then the multi courts, there would be one court that would have a tennis uh, net across and then the other court would not. Um, but both courts could also lend themselves to street hockey or soccer, um, that kind of thing. And then for the fitness equipment, that location is here where the previous tot lot was located. Uh, these are the five pieces of equipment that were shown at Mary Hannon. There's an overhead ladder, the magnetic bells, which are basically weights that are that are attached um, on a sliding pole. And I think there's like 30 or 40 different exercises you can do with that. There's a wall with a net, a bench with a pull up bar and vertical ladders and parallel bars. And we heard um, maybe pull up bars with different heights. So we can do that in the incline press. We, we heard a request for a dip bench. Um, and then there's also opportunity to do potentially steps and or a core twist. So this is similar to the magnetic bells, but instead of lifting up and down, you're kind of rotating um, the weights around in a circle. And then with regards to seating, um, we think there's opportunity to customize the colors in the seats. Um, at the at the basketball court areas, we could do some double sided bench seating. We could do seats that have little side tables, definitely arms for um, for the elderly, and then we could do maybe some benches with arms or even some lounge chairs with arms. And you know what? I need to back up to the learning. I need to go. That reminds me. The community learning area would also be at the sensory plaza, excuse me for going back. Um, 
community library would be this location right here. There's a perfect little nook. So we could do some nice like armchair seating and then that could overlook this learning and sensory plaza off to the side. Okay, back to bench seating. And then also table seating. So throughout the park, we'll have a variety of table types. We'll do cafe tables with four seats. We can do cafe tables with two or three seats just to provide wheelchair access. And then the tables could also have a uh, laser cut, a perforated laser cut checkerboard pattern. So that's a permanent uh, game table. And then the picnic tables would be, could also be colorful. We would do metal um, considering uh, that uh, the community likes to bring their grills out there. So that's a nice, hard, durable surface. Um, and then we'll sh either shorten or remove one of these benches to provide wheelchair access. And so fencing, there's uh, two types of fencing out there right now. There's the chain link fence and the picket fence. We think there's an opportunity to do a welded wire fence with like this gray color. You can see it provides a lot of transparency. So this is a picture of the basketball courts at Mary Hannon. You can very easily see everything that's happening beyond the fence. Um, whereas if you're looking through the chain link fence, the chain link fence kind, kind of obscures it. And I, I think it's mostly the black color. Um, and there's a great opportunity to, to incorporate some color in the post. So in this image at Mary Hannon, you see bright yellow posts and then the fencing kind of blends back in in the background. And I'm going to go back to the plan because I want to talk about fence and gate locations for the park as well. So instead of having fenced off sections, so a fence for the basketball courts and then a fence at the playground and then a fence at the splash pad. What this plan is showing is that there's a perimeter fence around the whole park. So we have the existing fence on the wall along Dacia Street that would continue until we get to the entrance. And then along Danube Street, we would keep the keep or modify the existing fence that separates um, the playground from the school. We'd have a double gate here, and then we'd have two gates over by the courts. So a uh, perimeter fence all around the whole playground area eliminates the need for having interior fences that kind of divide up sight lines. Um, interior, there will be some fencing. So the multi-court that has the center net that could be used for tennis, there would be a small section of fence here and here. So at the north, at, at the long ends of the court, on the long, along the long axis of the court, um, just for, for any stray balls and for the safety of other users in the park and playground area. And that was fencing. And now we're at the listening discussion. So I'm gonna go back to the plan slide so we can refer back to that. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, Monique. Um, so there's already been several questions in, in the chat feature. So I'm just, uh, for anybody that's not following along with that. Um, so the, the slides are, uh, the embankment slides are metal. Um, they're under that heavy shade canopy. And then the other slides will work to have those oriented in a way that they're um, they're they're not in direct full sun in the summer. The other component of them is that the larger slides, what they do is that with the tube slide, it actually shades itself. So the bottom part where people are sliding stays cooler, um, and the tops are uh, it, it is where the heat is retained. Um, there was question uh, some comments about. Um, the, the benches, ensuring that the benches and picnic tables have that have armrest to discourage any uh, overnight uh, residents in the park. So that certainly will be incorporated. 
I see one comment about the zip line. So there will not be a standalone zip line. It, it, what we can do is look with the manufacturers to have that be a component of the structured play, but it just the sheer amount of uh, real estate they take up. Um, for instance, this yellow piece that you're seeing in the central lawn, a, a, one of the larger zip line play structures would take that entire area up for that one use. Um, so we tend, just because they, they monopolize a space, we tend not to utilize them. Um, with that being said, people can certainly still feel free to put uh, chat comments and questions in the chat, but you can also at this point raise your hand, turn your cameras on, um, and we can go from there. I see one question about the book stand, a little free library. That's, that's shown right, uh, yeah, if you can see where the cursor is right there. Uh, where the steps, where there currently are steps that go up to the basketball court, that's where we're looking at that can have kind of a nook that matches up with some of the sensory and, and youth activities. All right. All right, I'm looking for hands. All right, Stanley, I see your actual hand raised, but I think we can count that so i just you should be able to unmute yourself now now with um how you doing nate how's everybody doing, doing well. uh, thanks for coming tonight thanks a lot um now with the with the the area where the grass is uh so that's still gonna be that's still gonna remain a grass area but it's gonna be reduced it's, it's slightly reduced in size, but it's, it's more formalized. So it has pathways defining it. So that, uh, uh, you know, pick up soccer games, uh, Frisbee, football, things like that can still happen in that space. It's now formally defined so that people can navigate around the space. Okay, okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, and, we, the, the previous plan had it about here we pushed into we pushed a little closer to the trees just so we could accommodate um, a few pieces of fitness equipment i'm sorry of play equipment and make that play area continuous but we really only lost about a thousand square feet on the lawn um, by pushing into the trees and then there was that um, trike track that was around so the trike track kind of got absorbed by this perimeter path as well, so just kind of maximizing that lawn area as well. All right. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? All right, I see a hand up. Ash. Yeah, my question might be a little bit off topic, but I'm just concerned about like what's to prevent this from turning into a dog park? And for obvious reasons, that would be a problem as far as cleanliness. You know what I mean? What safeguards are in place to prevent that, if any? Sure. Um, so as any park, you know, uh, dogs are, as long as it's not a, just a designated playground, dogs are allowed in the park. Um, we do have signage uh, that says they have to be on leash. Um, but, but dogs would be allowed here. Um, the component of that's gonna be, you know, self-policing, uh, you know, when, when users are in there and they're walking dogs without leash that, you know, kindly ask them, put them on leash or, or point to the sign. The other component is that if that uh, activity continues, we certainly can 311 it. And then what our animal control, control will do is, um, they can go out there when, when it's noted that people are out there and abusing those rules and, and try and do some uh, policing in that regard as well. So, um, one comment in here. This basketball course problematic. There's two family I can make it bigger to see. Sorry. So we will still have a buffer of trees and and everything between the park and that side. 
of, of this of the site. Um, and we certainly can can speak to that homeowner. We 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 actually when I was flying, I actually did speak to him about uh, his level of, of being able to see into the park and, and um, you know the how he utilizes that from ensuring that the park is safe and and reporting incidents that, that are happening. Yeah, I will say with regards to layout of the program. So the three schemes that were presented scheme A kept the courts in their current location and then schemes B and C placed the courts at the southern edge and there was overwhelming support for schemes B and C at the last meeting. Uh, at this point, no, we are not uh, putting a bleacher, any bleachers in there. Um, realistically, there's not a lot of space. Um, we're already kind of knitting uh, a pathway through there. So it, it tends to be quite a bit tight. Um, and again, I think, um, you know, we want the site to be transparent and open. And a lot of times what we unfortunately have is that uh, bleachers can become bulky um, and um, sometimes have negative activities that are associated with them. But I know you guys do basketball tournaments, things and events like that. So um, the idea of potentially bringing in temporary ones or something, we could maybe. But again, the site is you know it's, it's very tight in that space. And some of the, some of the components of um, you know looking at this division of spaces here, the darker green clouds are existing trees. So uh, right to the yeah, so to, so to the left, page left of that, you can see some existing trees, but then also to the right, there's three very large trees that somewhat, you know, in terms of, of layout, they, uh, to the right of that, you see the, the existing trees, they, they um, can find the space a little bit, both in the center lawn, as well as where the courts are proposed. Yeah, we do have lots of seating there underneath the bright green circles, so there are, lots of little bench seating. Um, it won't be a bunch of people sitting all together, but there's there are definitely lots of seating opportunities um, in the courts underneath the shade. Any other? Um... Yeah, the other thing for bleacher specifically oh. is it's a place where, where individuals can lay down. So. When we do do benches, we try to do them um, it, with uh, center arms and, you know, for several reasons. Um, and then when we do the accessible tables, we'll also be shortening the benches. And that's responding to asking for bleacher specifically. And Michael, I think you're on muted. Yeah, I think uh, looking at the set, the numbers of, of crowds that people are talking about the basketball courts, I don't know if there's a way to move it more towards the middle and change where you have the play the uh, grass area with the courts because I think that is going to impact the uh, English side and the um, uh, do I think the Stewie uh, Street and Dacia Street residents on the on that side. So just in terms of the, the noise. Uh, level and the crowd size uh, that will impact. I also have concerns about what are the uh, levels of the trees, the size of the trees, how far off the ground, what's the sight lines, uh, is there brush? Because I know that we've had um, issues of drug use and overnight um, um, activities that's gone on. So at point where custodians and everybody uh, find needles uh, that impact the uh, students that are trying to go to school. Good point. Um, yeah, so the trees that we're proposing are um, the the green ones are, you know, they'll be our standard install size of uh, what we call like two and a half inch caliper trees. Um, so, but they will grow up, they'll be uh, limbed up so that they're more higher up canopy trees. The purple type circle ones are what we're calling ornamental trees. Those are still uh, larger, they will not be, they're not shrub, we're not proposing any shrubs uh, or, or things that would be causing those issues. 
Yeah, when we do the design documents, we'll do a six foot minimum clear height for everything. Um, so that what that tends to mean is that, is the ornamental trees get put in at a larger size than they typically do on other um, projects. And then with regards to the center courts, again, that scheme was the least favored scheme. That's the existing kind of court area. It really bisects the parks. If we go with that scheme, then we have fencing around um, the court areas that really divides up the park and obscures sight lines even further. So the existing courts right now have fencing and you can't see from one end of the park to the other. Um, with regards to the noise levels, um, when courts are active, they will be noisy. Moving them 100 feet to the left or right, it's still going to be the same amount of noise that's coming from that area. It does put it closer to the residents, um, but it, and it's also an occasional use. The majority of the time, the park will be used um, by kids on the playground, um, kids in the splash pad. So we have to we have to balance all of these things. Um, and I think ultimately we favored having the clear sight lines, pushing the courts off to the side. Um, that's that's where we've landed. It's it's just, it's a fine balance for everything. Yeah, and and so looking, you know, shifting the court away from that property edge, you know, that will uh, drastically reduce the the play area space. So if that's something that is strongly desired, that you, you know, looking at the the impacts of that is that that will the impact of moving that away reduces play space uh, for which you know is what we want to encourage kids to be in the park. But we can, we you know, we can continue to refine the the spaces and the layouts, and we can work to give it maybe a little bit buffer, a little bit more buffer than it currently has. Any other comments, questions? Any thoughts on the? Okay, there's one. Yeah, and but again, yeah. So Stanley says the courts are used more in the summer, and kids use the park more frequently. Um, again, we can, you know, we'll continue to refine these as long as the general layout is has support. But we can work, you know, we can certainly work to ensure that we're not being a nuisance to the neighbor either. So, and we can, and I I've spoken with that neighbor in particular, so I'll be sure to, um, you know, speak to him before the before we proceed as well. Any thoughts on uh, the splash pad as proposed? Let's see, one question on grass upkeep. Um, so our, our typical uh, approach is, is mowing um, to within the construction project, the, the contractor will own lawn establishment that keeps it fenced off until the, the grass uh, gets uh, successfully established and thick enough to be able to withstand, withstand the use. Um, we can, in terms of more regular maintenance or uh, upkeep, you know, again, that's something we can, you know, both through 311 requests um, as well as the potential of establishing a friends group that we can at least uh, have that type of communication and engagement from the community that certainly would help in that process. Yeah. All right, with that being said, I, I wanna hear what people think of, um, sorry, Richard, about security. So uh, we are working with uh, the police department and through the, the communication channel we have, but it does sound promising that um, either uh, at least a, a call box, but the potentially security camera as well. Give it a go and let's get it started. So uh, thoughts on the splash pad? Anybody have comments? Do we like the idea of uh, runnels? One of the things we were, um, thinking about with that is especially the proximity to school, trying to get them engaged, um, 
within the park grant, one of the things we want to do is have educational and, and sustainable uh, practices incorporated. So looking at the idea of uh, like this, this one child that's um, in the upper right picture, the idea that we could potentially mimic the idea of, you know, uh, the Quabbin water reservoir and how Boston gets its drinking water. So there's ideas, you know, all about how that could be loosely, loosely done in the landscape, but have the educational components. But then the other thing is that these can drain to and help um, uh, water some of the trees in the landscape. And so you're, you're getting a double benefit of that, both the, the recreational and the play, but also the watering of trees. All right, I see people. This is also a great opportunity to have a friends group and have a community garden or not a community garden, a, a, a flower garden um, in, that kids could, could maintain. Um, uh, ugh. So there's several um, large planting areas underneath the linden trees. So we could dedicate a portion of that space that could be flowered beds that was maintained by the community. And um, there could be signage and, you know, kids could plant, you know, uh, the zinnias every year, or they could have bulbs there and, you know, trim them. That would be a great place for that to happen. So, um... Yeah, so one, uh, can you go to the, back to the, can we go back to the overall plan, Monique? Yeah. So, so one question was talking about lighting. Um, so uh, right now we have some sports court lighting, but then we also have the kind of security level poles throughout um, that some, several of them are on all of the time because of maintenance issues with them. So what we're looking at is, is having, um, you know, lighting through, lighting in the pathway so that you can navigate through the park. Um, the other component of court lighting that we've been looking at is having uh, button activators so that the court lights when not utilized uh, by, by uh, players, the, the court lights themselves will actually go off, but then there's a button that people can go, which will, will activate the lights. Um, and then it, it, it goes for a uh, period of time, can be 30 minutes or, or an hour. It gives like a, a single flash notice so that if you're still playing, you run over and you hit the button again and you get that next extended period of time. What we are looking at for this, it, uh, yes, it will be path, pathway lighting. So it's not gonna be large um, sports lighting around the park. It'll be more pedestrian type scale poles. But uh, the, the other component about it is for the courts, it'll be LED sports lighting, which are very directional. Uh, so we can ensure that no light spillover is going into the uh, neighboring home. It can be pointed directly on the courts itself as opposed to out, uh, out towards the homes. Yeah, just to expand on what Nate's saying, the idea is that uh, there would be a constant fixed amount of light for all of the pedestrian path areas. And then the sports light, if you needed more light to play nighttime games, then that would be user activated. Um, you would push a button, the, the court lights would come on, but it would still be, if the court lights weren't on, it would still be evenly lit throughout the park. And we're getting lots, lots of great uh, comments in, in the chat feature, but people can still continue to raise their hands and be unmuted so they can speak as well if they want. Any other? Oh, I see a hand up. Great, uh, Andre. You know. Good evening, everyone. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Good. Um, this is great. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, very much appreciated. Um, I was asking specifically about the the bleachers because um, what happens is as as we're thinking about these tournaments and these fundraisers for these kids. Uh, we do have a lot of families that come out in large groups and when seating isn't available, it tends to be kind of the, you know, standing around and grouping, which we're trying to avoid. With, I, I think we're all trying to avoid of that type of activity. Um, and so I'm not, I'm hearing that you're saying that you may or may not be able to do it, 
but is there a possibility that where there could be bleachers it you know maybe facing you know the multi court and one facing you know in between the multi court with the center net and the mm-hmm. the play structure where even you know people can you know watch their kids on one side and you know enjoy the game on another um when we do have those individual seatings that separates and allows certain groups to meet and do whatever. And I'm not saying that negative is happening. They're watching the game, but if we're all on the bench, sure. you know, if I, I, I believe that that lessens the, you know, the chance of something or something negative happening. If we're right, it's, if it's right in the middle where everyone can see out in the open between, you know, two, <laughs> You know, two so we, places. Sorry, that was my son. No worries. I may, hopefully he's commenting on the play equipment. That he likes, he right? is as he's breaking the <laughs> other play equipment inside the house. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. So we can. I mean, again, we can look at pushing and pulling some of these. We don't. We don't have a, a lot of room, but we can. We can see what we can potentially do. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not looking for. Oh, I'm not asking for like a hundred. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get what you're yeah. See, yeah. Something weird, you know, like you the know, two or three tier type bleachers. Right, 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 right. right. Yep, yeah. we can see, we can see what we can uh, okay. try and fit. Yeah, well, we can have internal discussion. I, I think there's still a fine balance about providing places where people can can lay down. So, you know, is it is it a question of providing a need for an occasional use or a need for a daily use? To be honest. Well, mm-hmm. well, basketball basketball is you know a daily use. I agree. I agree, but it's going to be hard to make this an, an inviting park when there's people sleeping yeah. in it all the time. If there's yeah, people again, doing work, again, I think we'll, we'll be we'll be able to push them. People pull sleeping. Them I'm yeah, sorry, that, I couldn't hear. Yeah. So, keep, so keep. what we what we've had in some other parks is that at our bleachers uh, tends to be where uh, drug use and um, inhabitants tend to uh, stay. So ah, that's your concern. We, mm. We've been removing them, but again, I think it, it might not necessarily be a bleacher, but we could mm-hmm. maybe yes. figure out some sort of seating component that doesn't mm. draw that that type of crowd. So uh, I'm thinking like right now that the space between um, the, the the purple space for, for children's play in that, that court, I think we can look at doing some sort of seating component that maybe continuous that helps divide the spaces, but also serves as seating. So um, one thing we wanna be conscious about with that is is having them um, perpendicular to the street though, so that um, they don't become places that people can hide or or, or, um, be behind. And so the park can easily be uh, viewed uh, for for the safety standpoint. So, Oh, okay, I get that. Um, and my last point or question, um, you, I caught you. I caught it late, or I think I've never been doing some with the kids. The metal slides. Yeah, I felt like that was torture growing up. Uh, on a hot day. Yeah. So, so the embankment ones are under those large canopy trees. So those are pretty heavily shaded. Um, as the well six as six feet ones you were men- mentioning earlier. Yes. Yeah. 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 If you're so, looking at the plan, so the tree. I am. Here's the here's the my little bubble of where the the shade for those trees are, but actually this whole area is in shade, without us adding a single new tree. And it's at the splash pad too. So um, what my daughter is, and her friends like to do is put water on it and go even faster. Uh, is the there an option? It is there an option for a different type of material? And can um, we vote on that option? Yeah, so, so, so what the manufacturers, they have both plastic and um, metal slides. I don't know at this height, so that, like in, for instance, that slide in the background there is a plastic tube slide. Uh, Where are you I can, looking at? Uh, on the slide here, do you see the slide? Oh, in the back, okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, in the background, yeah, yeah. So that one is a plastic tube slide. Um, so what you can see on that is that, that each of those segments and the color change is where there are um, connection points. What sometimes we have in those, that's that those are fail points for the slides. 
So structurally, a steel one tends to be um, sturdier and safer. The other thing that we've Maya, seen is- excuse me. Can you lower your voice, please? <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. No, she said yes. I wish my daughter would respond back yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we can certainly talk with the manufacturer and, and look at that. One thing I do have to say, though, is with the plastic slides, what, what does happen is that you get kids that congregate at the bottom um, and then or they try and climb up it. So what we have seen with the metal slides is, yes, it is hot, um, but it does, it's, it's, they're not hot enough to burn, but you can go down, it, but it's hot enough to discourage you from congregating and, and kind of creating the bottleneck that you slide down and run into a bunch of kids at the bottom. But we can, we'll, we'll talk with the manufacturer and see what they have for options for this equipment. So those are good points though. And I, I see, yeah, thank you for that. I see a couple other hands. I'm gonna go to, um, I, I'm gonna, sorry, what? Stanley, please first. Yeah, yes. Can you unmute him? Oh, so, and then if you look at the way the, 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 um, the, the benches, I'm, I'm with Bray on this, but the benches at the bottom on, um, inside the current court right now they have the wooden, the wooden yeah, yeah yeah all right if if we're looking at um i said i know they're talking about the metal because what i what i'm what i'm thinking of and i think terry noticed mentioned this too the overcrowdedness um of the games so is there any way where it may not be bleachers but is there an option for benches on in some in some capacity mm -hmm. on the court that that would be something they could factor in? Yeah, yeah, I think we can look at that. Again, what I'm thinking, especially on that green, the where the trees are between the multi-sport court and the in the uh, the play equipment, you know, there's a green swap there. So perhaps a retaining wall, similar to what we did at Mary Hannon that can serve as a seating wall for that, that runs that whole space, helps divide the space up, but it also is perpendicular with the road so it doesn't create a hiding spot behind it. So that that's a possibility. Yeah, I'm and, definitely- And then again, hearing, go ahead, Monique. I'm definitely hearing the need for volume seating to accommodate the games. And then I, I think the internal discussion from here will be how do we do that um, mm -hmm. without sacrificing safety and, and sight lines. Because I'm thinking if, you know, if you use the bottom section of each opposite side mm -hmm. of the court, um, somewhere along the corner section, um, again, like you said, where it doesn't compromise the out of bounds and mm -hmm. things like that, um, that would reduce it because you're, you're, you're figuring um, right now we're six years in with the basketball league and people are six years mature. So in terms of a lot of the negative, um, the violence that happened around there, a lot of it was internal and a lot of them were six years older. So, mm -hmm. so to, to, to recognize and appreciate the growth of this community and not minimize that, in terms of the abutters and, and the nodes, I can't, we can't control that part, but the internal stuff that we did control, mm -hmm. we have seen the progress of it. So to be able to have something that would support one of the things that have the the neighborhood well that 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 park is got to be recognized for is around the sports um, mm -hmm. would be helpful because we do get a lot of attention in the summertime uh, around that. Sure. Yeah, I, I think per Monique's point, we can, we can certainly see what we can do to to augment some seating options around there. Thanks for that input. And I think, um, hopefully I pronounce this right, Kalamu. Hi, it's uh, Kalamu, actually, but uh, no worries. Um, I've seen, or oh, I wonder if it's possible to use, um, I've seen benches, uh, excuse me, um, bleachers that are retractable, so that when they're not in use, they're, kind of just like a more like a wall 
Mm -hmm. Something like that might be possible. Yeah, it, a lot of times those are more indoor, and again, it's just the moving feet, the moving components on them. Um, they tend to get rusted or or um, stuck, and so sometimes they can become more of a more of a hazard than a benefit. Um, but it, yeah, I think we're going to explore some seating options and see what we can provide for this space. That sounds like a really little one, huh? Yeah, got a three-year-old and a, and a nine-month-old. There you go. That's a good mix. I mean, I got four, but these <laughs> are the ones that cause all the noise. Nice. Well, hopefully they'll be out here uh, playing soon enough. I can barely manage one child. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with Monique. I have one five-year-old that is, she runs our house. So. Um. I think uh, Ash, do you have a, uh, you have your hand up? Yeah, um, I think this is more of a, a comment than an actual question, but I'll give it a shot. Now, the homeless, people living without, that don't have homes, the space is very inviting. So mm -hmm. I don't see the homeless or people without homes actually not utilizing the space. So my, I guess my question is, how is that going to be managed? Is it going to be um, aggressive? Is it going to be, you know, more humanistic, I guess, to put it that way? That's a, a great point. Um, my understanding is that uh, when um, complaints of, of encampment or, or uh, people taking up residence in our parks, that the police department's first level of engagement is sending resource officers out to provide um, either uh, information on in location for um, housing or, or um, shelters or substance abuse if that's needed. Um, so that's my understanding of their uh, first step to try and, you know, address the issue that's causing it as opposed to um, incriminate in some way. Um, so in that regard, obviously we wanna create a park that's welcoming, comforting, engaging that, that residents wanna um, come. I think uh, what we have seen is when we re revitalize a park, it is so filled with, with residents, you know, do, using in the park exactly like we've talked about night, uh, tonight with kids playing on playgrounds, basketball tournaments, you know, uh, splash pad exercise. So uh, by occupying the park with a lot of these positive behaviors, a lot of times what we see is that people that are, uh, you know, tend to be homeless or, or looking at, I see a thing of a comment about drug use, they want to do it in a park that's not surrounded by people. Um, you know, that they want to do that in the darkness. They want to do that where they, they don't feel, you know, judged or people looking in on them. So what we're hoping to do is revitalize this, provide all, you know, the resources to have all of that positive activity and then have that be the dominating force here. Okay, and I, I totally get that. I totally get that. But I just like to state that people who are homeless, not everybody who's homeless do drugs. You know what I'm saying? There's mental health issues, a lot of things um, supposed to admit that. And just to make that comment, you know, it doesn't apply to everybody. Unfortunately, that's, that's the stigma, but it doesn't yeah. apply to everybody's homeless. Certainly. That's correct. But a, a lot of people that are homeless tend to, to Nate's point, avoid places that are heavily populated. Um, it, a lot of people with mental health issues have issues being around society and and seek to go to places where they're not immediately exposed to people where they may feel like they are outcast um and then so nate do you want to address the needles in 311 yeah so it's certainly all all anytime you see three one uh needles 311 them um and then the sharps team will come out and, and pick them up the other thing that they do is they track those um all, every single needle is is tracked in a system so they can start to, the city can map out where certain areas are more problematic or more prone to have needles. And then the level of um, 
surveillance or, or, or cleanup can happen at a more frequent point. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it, it's kind of, um, if everybody pitches in and reports when they see stuff, then that's, that's um, I don't want to say enforcing, that's not our method of, of enforcing, but that's our way of calling attention to an area and, and making sure that it gets the attention that's appropriate. But those are those are all certainly good points, and you know one can you know a, a one layer of, of you know societal living is, is looking out for everybody and, and trying to make sure um, anybody that's down on their luck is getting resources. So I appreciate the comments on that. Yeah. All right. Is there any other hands up? Any other comments? If not, I can uh, certainly let people. Go a little bit earlier. I know we started later than anticipated, so um, I don't see any. So, uh, Monique, can you just flip to the very last slide again? Yes. Perfect. So, so this has the project website there. Um, it also has. Um, I can't see under the chat thing. Is my contact on there? No way. My contact not. is not on there, but um, I will put my email on the chat feature now. Um, the meeting notes uh, and presentation will be on the website as well as the recording for this. Um, if anybody did not speak tonight and wanted to, or uh, something pops in your head later tonight that, that you didn't get a chance to say, you certainly can email that. That'll be incorporated in the meeting notes. Um, and then going forward on this project, the next steps is uh, Monique and I will work to incorporate the comments from tonight and, and work on some tweaks to the de de design. Um, and then we look uh, to potentially have construction starting this summer. And uh, there'll be updates on the project page, uh, letting you know any, any changes of the project. Uh, Stanley, I see your hand up. There we go. So, Nate, when are they looking to start the construction? We, because so what, we're, what we're trying to figure out is um, what what should we do as an alternative plan for the for the league for the summer if they're mm -hmm. looking to start the construction when we don't know. So we I, I think we can have. Yeah, I think we one I. I don't have that exactly finalized yet. Monique and I will be working on that schedule. Um, now that we have, you know, we, we have general consensus on the plan. Again, we'll work on those tweaks of it, but that, you, you know, we're, we're going in the right direction. So once we have that, we'll, we'll finalize our plan, get that ironed out. Um, what I think you and I can do is have an offline conversation with our permitting department to try and I either identify other courts or, um, we can look at the schedule Monique and I come up with and see if that, um, if that can be adjusted to, to be accommodating to your, to your tournament. So there we go. Nate, um, I'll, um, to add to your point of permitting Stanley, if it does happen that construction does start around the time you have tournaments, um, you can reach out to Paul McCaffrey who does your permitting he's really good at trying to get you um a location very close to this location so that way it doesn't really yeah. um disturb your tournament as much yeah, yeah. and again if, if, if we can adjust our schedule slightly to be more uh you know to give you a little bit more wiggle room you know we'll see what we can do on that I, I, I think that's a conversation we can have when we get a little bit closer to that. Yeah, um, I think from I think, a planning point for your event, I'll I'll, I'll yeah. get you, uh, Paul, and me to all speak, and we can see what we can work out. Um, who would be the point person to talk about um, speed bumps on um, on Den uh, on Danube Street? Um, yeah. Who? Jay Sean Gant, your neighborhood liaison. So his, yeah, if you go to the project page, his his uh, contact email is on there. Okay, cool. Yeah. If you wanna, if you wanna send me an email, I can connect you guys to Stanley. 
All right, that'll work. All right. Andre, I see your, your, where your, was your hand up? No. Oh, hold on. There you go. You can unmute yourself, I think, now. Did I see your hand go up? Yeah, it was it was up for a second. It was it was for the speed bumps, um, but also um, I never really understood why um, why these um, projects start in the summer when the kids want to use it in the summer. Um, so um, the like the grand opening is going to be in the, like when kids can't use it. Uh, it, it so it this is probably going to be open in the spring of twenty twenty three. So that's if we can get construction started in in this summer, that that'll open up for next year. Um, really, the, next year. Yeah, the main component of it is obviously just like you know a basketball tournament. The most ideal time to be doing construction is when the weather's as most as favorable as possible, which tends to be the summer. The other thing is that um, the rubber surfacing that we we put down is weather contingent, so. What we try and do is get the project done so that get it advanced so that in the spring that's when the you know it's warming up the contractor can get that in and then it's open for the rest of the year. Um, if we start too late in the year, we then you know we either push too late in the following year or we we get towards November and we can't put rubber surfacing down. Yeah. Thanks. No problem. All right. Um, so with that being said, I think uh, I can we can adjourn the meeting again.